Hello, I am Philippe Girard, and I am a professor in the history department at McNeese State University. And I am Janet Allured, also a professor in the history department at McNeese State University. Welcome to Your Grandma Rocks on KBYS, where we explore the lives of famous women in history. Welcome and bienvenue à nos amis francophones. Ceci est la radio de l'Université McNeese. On the program today, music and history as we retrace the life of a remarkable woman. She left Russian-occupied Poland to find love and success in France. She was the only scientist to ever win two Nobel Prizes in two different scientific disciplines. Her name was Marie Curie. Before we start, a song from Marie Curie's homeland. Here's a 1969 pop number by Polish clone of the Beatles, the band Skaldowie. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Singing along might be a bit difficult for you, but feel free to stand up and dance to that catchy tune entitled Medications of a Rural Postman. I think you meant meditations. It might be a medicated postman. We never know. <laughs> In Polish, it is Meditasze Fieskiego Listonosa. Enjoy. Well, that was fun. You don't get to hear Polish pop music that often. Welcome back to Your Grammar Rocks and the life of Polish scientist Marie Curie. Our story starts in Warsaw, where Marie Curie was born Maria Skladowska, or something like that, in 1867. You may say that she was destined for a career in the sciences. Her mother was a teacher, and her father was a professor of math and physics. She was also a gifted student. But times were not always easy. At the age of nine, she lost her sister to typhoid, and two years later, she lost her mother to tuberculosis. In the process, uh, she also lost her faith in God. Times were also tough for Poland, which had been split between neighboring empires and had ceased to exist as an independent country. Marie Curie grew up in Russian-occupied Poland. She excelled in every field, but she was denied a chance to go to the university because women at the time could not study science. So she joined an underground clandestine university to learn topics banned by their Russian overlords. And then to make ends meet, she had to take up a position as a governess. And for years, she endured loneliness in the Polish countryside while saving her money for better days. Her only hope for success was emigration. She chose to leave for France, where her older sister had already found success as a medical student. I guess they didn't have a wall back then <laughs> around France. Uh, time to take our second musical break. And I think it would be impossible to do a program on Marie Curie without playing a piece by the other famous French-Polish national. And I'm talking about the composer, Frédéric Chopin. And I'm sure that he was playing nonstop in the Curie household. <laughs> so let's enjoy the most beautiful, but also the most challenging practice piece made by Chopin, the revolutionary étude. <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome back to your Grandma Rocks on KBYS. I'm Janet Alluret on the history faculty here at McNeese. And my name is Philippe Girard. I am also a professor in the history department. And today we explore the life of the Polish-born scientist Marie Curie. The year was 1891. And after arriving by train in Paris, she moved in with her sister and she enrolled in the Faculty of Sciences at the University of Paris. She was one of a handful of women there, but she didn't lose her time. After just two years, she obtained her undergraduate degree in physics, finishing first in her class. A degree in math followed a year later. I wish my students were just as conscientious. <laughs> Pretty impressive. It was in Paris that she fell in love with her fellow scientist named Pierre, and she married him in 1895. This is how Maria Sklodowska became Marie Curie. Uh, the two started an ambitious program studying magnetism and then radioactive elements. Radioactivity occurs when atoms like uranium, which are so large that they are unstable, lose some of their energy in the form of radiation. Pierre and Marie Curie were able to describe the process and also to isolate two new elements, polonium and radium. You can look them up on the table of elements. They are number 84 and 88. She presented her research when defending her PhD. The dissertation jury granted her a PhD with honors, which is the least you can do when one of your students discovers two brand new elements. And you may also have noticed that she named one of the elements after her native Poland, which always remained very dear to her heart. Somehow she also managed to find the time to have two daughters. She thought that the public curriculum didn't leave enough room for imagination, so she homeschooled them in her spare time. I think that is called having it all. <laughs> Public recognition came in 1903 when she and her husband shared a Nobel Prize in physics for their work. Initially, the Nobel Committee had forgotten to include her in the prize until her husband reminded them that she had done half the work. That was good of him. A success at home and in your career. Speaking of which, let's pause for a French song about high achieving women breaking glass ceilings. This one is by Michel Sardou and it is entitled Women of the 1980s. Femme des années 80, mes femmes jusqu'au bout des seins, ayant réussi l'amalgame de l'autorité et du charme. Femme des années 80, moins Colombine qu'un requin, sachant bien noter sur la gamme, qui va du grand sourire aux larmes, être un PDG en valoir, sexy comme autrefois les stars, être un général d'infanterie, rouler des patins aux conscrits, enceinte jusqu'au fond des yeux, qu'on a envie d'appeler monsieur, être un flic ou pompier de service, c'est donner le sein à mon fils. Femme panthère sous 
Welcome back to your Grandma Rocks on KBYS. Again, I'm Janet Allured in the History Department. And I am Philippe Girard. Our topic today is a French-Polish scientist, Marie Curie. By 1906, she had achieved everything. Marriage, motherhood, and most importantly, a career in the sciences crowned by a Nobel Prize. Unfortunately, heartbreak followed when her husband died suddenly. It was a rainy day in Paris, and Pierre Curie was run over by a carriage. Apparently, you can win a Nobel Prize and still forget to look both ways when you cross the street. Tragic. A few years later came World War I, which brought unimaginable bloodshed to Europe. France alone lost one and a half million men. Marie Curie was a patriot who worked as a nurse during the war, and she put to good use her recent breakthrough in the field of radioactivity. She equipped ambulances with x-ray machines, and she visited the front lines to help diagnose wounded soldiers. And that forced her to take yet another exam. In 1916, she took her driver's license, and you'll be happy to know that she passed. Mm -hmm. She spent all her personal funds on the ambulances during the war. Her discoveries had so many applications that they could, ha they could have made her rich, but she refused to ask for patents because she felt that everyone should benefit from them. By the end of World War I, she had no money to continue her research. By then, she had become such an international icon that uh, the women of the world came to her rescue. In the U.S., a public subscription raised $100,000 to buy a single gram of radium so that she could continue her research. Mm. So Marie Curie got to visit the United States for a triumphal tour that ended in the White House. There, President Harding officially presented her with the gram of radium bought for her by the people of the United States. Time for another musical break. Let's listen to a classic rock song about a French person coming to America. This one is by the French band Téléphone, and it is entitled Going to New York with You. Welcome back to KBYS and the life of the French-Polish scientist Marie Curie. 
By the 1920s, she was one of the most renowned scientists in the world. She had obtained a Nobel Prize in physics with her husband, and then another one in chemistry by herself after his death. And if you're keeping score, this was the first time in history that a woman had obtained a Nobel Prize. And it was also the first and only time that anyone, male or female for that matter, obtained two Nobel Prizes in two different scientific disciplines. Mm. She had her own research institute to study the use of radiotherapy in cancer treatments. She was also a professor at the Sorbonne. The day she began teaching, a paper wrote, This is a great feminist victory today. A woman is allowed to teach a higher education course to male and female students. The time is not far away when women will become human beings. Well, almost. Under French law, Marie Curie was not allowed to vote. Uh, that would only come in 1944. So much for having two Nobel Prizes to your name. Mm -hmm. The way she had homeschooled her daughters was also a success. One daughter became a scientist and earned a Nobel Prize with her husband in 1935. And the other daughter was a writer who married a local homeboy, a Cajun from Louisiana, Henri Labouis. He too got a Nobel Prize in 1965 for his work with UNICEF. Must have made for some interesting dinner conversation when the mother, the father, one daughter, and both sons-in-law are Nobel Prize winners. Fascinating. But she faced some dark days too. The press concocted a scandal accusing her of an affair with a fellow scientist who was married. For decades she had been working with large quantities of radioactive materials. People initially got very excited back then and they would put radioactive materials everywhere from toothpaste to cigarettes. Yeah they didn't know any better. But by the 1920s, as part of her ongoing medical research, Marie Curie began to suspect that radioactivity might have some bad effects on human health. And unfortunately, she was right. She contracted leukemia. And she worked all the way to the end, finally checking herself in the hospital on June 29th, 1934. And five days later, mm. she was dead. Somehow, Marie Curie managed to break new ground even after her death. In 1944, element number 96 was named Curium in her honor. There's also a mausoleum in Paris, the Pantheon, where all the great men from French society are buried. No woman had ever been buried there on her own merits until 1995, when the body of Marie Curie was moved to the Pantheon, alongside that of her husband, Pierre. You can go pay your respects there. You'll be safe. Her coffin has been lined with lead to protect visitors from her body, which is still slightly radioactive today. Patriot, a scientist, a role model, that was an incredible life. Uh, we'll end our musical journey where we began in the native Poland of Marie Curie with a nostalgic song by the rising star of Polish music today. Her name is Monika Brodka.
Welcome back. This is KBYS, the McNeese Radio. We just covered the life of Marie Curie, the French-Polish scientist who discovered two elements and earned two Nobel Prizes. Merci, and thank you for joining us. This has been Your Grammar Rocks on KBYS. My name is Philippe Girard. And I'm Janet Allured. This program was funded by a Juliet Hartner grant for Women in the Humanities. For more information on how to help finance fellowships at McNeese, contact the McNeese Foundation at 337 337- Four seven five 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 eight eight. And this program was also sponsored by the History Department at McNeese. If you want to apply for a degree in history or other fields, contact the admissions office at McNeese, 337 475 That's it for today. Au revoir. Goodbye. of the polar caps found the raiders of the lost ark solved the case for the genius from baker street helped to clean the central park i created the plan for the chinese wall went to desert made it rain swam through a shark tank bloodily found atlantis by the way but today i've got a cake to bake i've got no clue at all i've got a cake to bake haven't done that before Don't be proud, mate, please don't bother Go, come on and ask your mother How to bake, how to bake, bake that cake Tap, 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 cuckoo, cuckoo Tap, 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 cuckoo Tap, 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 cuckoo, cuckoo Tap, tap, tap I talked to a unicorn the other night He took me up on a lonely star Did the moon walk on the I've gone too far So I questioned the law of gravity Put the apple back up to the apple tree A to nurse I even learned Latvian I know it's so hard to believe And today I've got a cake to bake I've got no clue at all I've got a cake to bake And haven't done that before Don't be proud, mate Please don't bother Go come on and ask your mother We've got a cake to bake and got no clue at all. We've got a cake to bake and haven't done that before. Don't be proud, mate, please don't bother. Go come on and ask your mother how to bake, how to bake, bake that cake. Mix some dough. Add some love, let it bake, wait for it. Mix some dough, add some love, let it bake, wait for it. Mix some dough, add some love, let it bake, have some cake. Mix some dough, add some love, let it bake. We've got a cake to bake, and got no clue at all. We've got a cake to bake, I haven't done that before. Don't be proud, mate, please don't bother. Come on and ask your mother how to bake, how to bake, bake that cake. La place rouge était vide. Devant moi marchait Nathalie. Il avait un joli nom, mon guide, Nathalie. La place rouge était blanche La neige faisait un tapis Et je suivais par ce froid dimanche Nathalie Elle parlait en phrases sobres De la révolution d'octobre Je pensais déjà Qu'après le tombeau de Lénine on irait au café Pouchki boire un chocolat. La place rouge était vide. Je lui pris son bras, elle a souri. Il avait des cheveux blancs, mon guide, Nathalie. Nathalie. Dans 
sachant à l'université une bande d'étudiants l'attendait impatiemment on a ri on a beaucoup parlé il voulait tout savoir Nathalie traduisait Moscou les plaines d'Ukraine et les champs Élysées, on a tout mélangé et on a chanté. Et puis ils ont débouché en riant à l'avance du champagne de France et on a dansé. Ouais 